Hi everyone, it's Adam with Mago's Restoration. And today I am back with another client project for a painting talks video, another video in that series. I've got this coffee table that a client brought to me. It's Saga Cherry and they picked it up for pretty cheap, but you know, they wanted to spend a little bit of money on it getting it refinished and they wanted a particular color. She happens to have a lot of antiques, and so she wanted it to kind of match between two different colors that she showed me, and I kind of just tried my best to make it fit in between that, and usually on pieces that are refinished like this, you know, combining two different pieces, I know that you're going to have to use a toner, and I find that, you know, pigment stains look kind of blotchy on cherry, so that's my plan for this. I just started sanding off the finish and then I decided to take the base apart from the table. So for these curved surfaces, I used some citrus strip and I had a moderate amount of success with it. It got off the, you know, the lacquer, but it didn't really get the stain, the toner out of the, out of the wood. It just kind of stayed the same color. It's usually because of the fact that these things are turned, they're a little bit more absorb, they absorb finish more than a tabletop would. But, you know, Citrus strip works great for this purpose, especially for a finish like this. This is kind of citrus strip's, citrus strip's specialty, you know. It's good for these kind of applications. I just rinse it with solvents, you know. I'll put it in a, a lacquer and um, denatured alcohol mix and just rub it really well, clean it as good as I can, sand it, rinse and repeat if I have to. I usually only like to apply one round of stripper. I figure after that, if I can't get it off, chances are it's probably not coming out very easily. You know, normally I do voiceovers, but I'm going to talk about this, you know, got my respirator off, but you need to be careful with solvents just because I'm talking. Um, this is after two washes with solvents and one, you know, stripping with the paint strip. Because of the way that these are turned, typically, you know, you're going to have a lot more porous grain in my opinion, than you would on, say, a tabletop that was cut with a planer. So, I've, I've scrubbed and scrubbed on this, and I'm pretty sure, even after sanding a lot, this is probably about the best that I'm going to be able to do. Obviously, if I was to use a regular stain, this would not look good. So, you know, for a lot of refinished furniture, in my opinion, it's best definitely to do a seal coat with a shellac and denatured alcohol wash and then use something different on top of it that's not really staining it and spraying it to get a more consistent color. I just don't think that I'm going to be able to get this out. You know, I've sanded on this for a long time. I've, I've cleaned it multiple times. Sometimes it's easier than others, but in this particular case with these turned legs, it just doesn't really want to come out.
just some more cleaning here with lacquer thinner a little bit of denatured alcohol mix I uh, just try to get everything off it's a good way to get the dust out and I'll give it a final sanding with 240 and then that'll be it I'll put the denatured alcohol mixed with the de-wax shellac mixture and that'll be my seal coat So here's that seal coat here. I just added a tiny bit of denatured alcohol. And this process, this part right here, kind of caused me a lot of trouble later. And I'll kind of explain why now. So I, I probably should not have thinned it down at all. And I probably should have put two coats of seal coat on. Because of the fact that I only put one coat of seal coat, the toner lacquer was absorbing differently in certain places and I ended up having to do two or three rounds of it whenever I think that if I had put more seal coat on and got like a really smooth and consistent surface I probably could have got away with just one um, coat of toner lacquer but you know I'm, I'm still learning on stuff like this um, toners are not something that I typically try to do a lot of it it's really in my opinion as a furniture finisher should be an expensive process not because of the fact that you want to make a ton of money off of it because of the fact that you're gonna be here messing and adjusting these toners for a long time if you're gonna try and get the finish right and it can be kind of difficult so just something to consider if you're thinking about taking this process on you know I would consider myself someone who spends a decent amount of time doing this and I still have a lot of trouble with it So this is really just a learning process just as much as it is for anybody else who's watching this, you know. Um, I, I can tell you that for the people that I do know, this is the same basic process that they follow. But I think that every piece is different and knowing how much sealer you need and how much you don't is kind of a difficult thing. So this is the first, well this is after two or three coats of the toner lacquer and it had been sanded. I kind of moved it in the light so you could see the sheen on it. It looks pretty good. It's pretty consistent. It's got it's got sanding marks in it though, but it's going to get a final coat of lacquer. So I've got the base up now, and I'm going to spray it. And you'll see there's areas where it blotches up really bad. And the good thing about using this depth brushing lacquer is that whenever I sanded it, it sanded really smoothly. It was like sanding chalk, and it came off easily. I didn't have to power sand it to get the orange peel out, you know. I didn't like the fact that I had to keep messing and messing and adjusting it with lacquer thinner because whenever you have orange peel and a toner lacquer, it looks horrible. Your toner lacquer needs to be pretty thin in my opinion and from what I've learned because if it's not, you'll see the variations and the dips in the color, whereas with a normal clear finish, you know, it's clear, you can't really see that as much, but it's pretty dark. And it's really hard to see, especially in this light. But I, I was actually happy with the tabletop after working with it for a little while. And I'm hoping that after that final coat of 
uh, semi-gloss brush lacquer with no toner in it that it'll really make it come to life and look good and um, you know I kind of experimented a lot with this off camera but I really kind of wanted to have this down before I showed it to anybody and held this up as some kind of example of how to do this you know like I said I'm I'm no expert on this I kind of just trying to figure it out as I go I do a lot of research on forums things like that and I mean I've learned I've, I've been in the trade for a little while and I've, I've learned from other furniture refinishers on how to do certain stuff like this but I mean no one can really teach you everything so this is still a process for me just as much anyone else so this is a uh, dark walnut trans tint mixed with a tiny bit of lacquer thinner and some deft brushing lacquer and as you can see it's a little blotchy but it'll settle out and it'll look a little bit better okay so the legs look pretty good the base not so much I kind of expected that because I think I got a little bit more sealer on the legs whenever I sprayed them the first time with the seal coat I'm just sanding with a 220 on the flat surfaces and I decided just to spray the, um, the, not the base, I'm sorry, just the, the frame and not the table legs. I kind of figured out that the runners were the only thing that really needed to work. So I'm just kind of blending them in and trying to figure out, you know, which area needs to be sprayed. And that's at this point kind of just what I'm doing with this I'll probably put another coat of semi-gloss lacquer on the base I'm not really sure yet I might just leave it with two coats of the toner lacquer on it I mean it's 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 lacquer you know it is a top coat so that could be okay so this is after two coats of the toner and I'm gonna let it sit for a little while and see how it looks it's not perfect but I mean for me, I think it's pretty good. I've got some bad spots in the corners there where I put on too much. So this is just another coat of dye mixed with the lacquer. Try to get the color a little bit darker on the frame and the legs were okay so I just left them, didn't spray them. So I'm reattaching the base here, but not for long because when I saw the top, it was still a little bit gummy and I decided to do another go around with the lacquer. Just on the top, I mixed up some Gemini with some trans tint 
and I stain the top with Transitic mixed with denatured alcohol and here I am spraying on that first coat. So this pre-cat lacquer sprayed better for sure and it was only $38 a can so you know wasn't really mad about that compared to Deft and that's about 70 for that Deft brushing lacquer. It's more readily available but you know I think the trade-off was good. I think this is more of a professional product that's made to be used with a spray gun. Well I know it is but also you know the other big factor that kind of influenced this for me was if you're looking at a can of lacquer or finish or anything and something just doesn't seem right with it, then it's best to just get rid of it and, and not try to use it. it it's just going to cause you more problems. In that can of Deft that I had, I could tell that it had been in a hardware store sitting there forever and that something was wrong with it it was just off the color didn't look right it was a lot more yellow than it typically looks and i've bought multiple cans of deft so i know what it looks like typically it's usually got a whitish color to it and this did not look like that at all and no matter how much i started it just really the finish just looked weird and i should have known then that something was off but i sprayed it anyway and i paid for it so, you know, just something to consider. If something doesn't look right, uh, just don't keep going with it. Just stop and reassess what you're doing. I apologize for the dark view right here. This was the second coat. I had a little bit problem because, you know, the, the sun was really shining and it was early in the morning. And so I had to close the garage door and just use an inspection light. I could see what I was doing better, but the camera could not. So here's the finished table. It's got a little bit of dust on it out here, but it came out pretty well. Uh, you know, I'm satisfied with it, and I think my client will be too. Thanks for watching.